Good morning, church. How is everybody this morning? Looking forward to spring? It's around the corner, yes? Friends, this morning we're wrapping up our series on incredible women of the Bible, and we have an incredible woman of God who's going to lead our teaching this morning. Welcome, our presiding bishop, everyone. Welcome, bishop. And let's have a look first before we go into all the act of worship at Psalm 111. And just a point of interest, this is what's called an acrostic psalm. Each line of the poem, as it was originally written, starts with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and then every verse carries on with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the psalmist is starting with alluya, praise the Lord. The Hebrew hallelujah. We've, we've got it as praise the Lord. And he says, I'll extol the Lord with all my heart in the of the upright and in the assembly. We are in the assembly this morning. Would you stand with me as we read the rest of Psalm 111? And please feel free to read the psalm along with me. Great are the works of the Lord that are pondered by all who delight in him. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So now I'm going to hand you over to our worship team. God of this city, you're the king of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are 
You're the light in this darkness You're the hope to the hopeless You're the peace to the restless You are There is no like our God There is no one like our God The greater things have yet to come Greater things are still to be done in this city Baby 
Abounds in deepest water 
Now, Lord, as we come before you, we pray that you would give us strength when we are weak, that you would give us love when we feel forsaken, that you would give us courage when we feel afraid. We pray, O oh dear God, that you would give us wisdom when we feel foolish and peace in our turmoil. That having experienced your love and your grace and known it firsthand, we may march forth into the community to be instruments of healing and change. As we come before you and the throne of your grace this morning, we remember, especially Uinene Mukwejana, that girl who was raped and murdered at her post office. We remember another one we have heard of from the Free State, a 14-year-old who was raped by his brother. It is not only them, Lord. There are many other women who experience the same. We pray that you would build up people of courage in our society who will stand up against any form of injustice. That our city, our country, would be transformed for your glory. This we pray, oh dear God, in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Won't you please be seated? And once more, welcome to everyone joining us here on campus and those who are joining online. It is good to be here. Just to say a few things. One, our Gen Now ministry is up and running. It caters for the ages between zero and... Um, six years old, and that's Kids Church. Then we have Gap, from which is grade four. In fact, let me call them by grades. Uh, otherwise, if I call them by ages, I may be mistaken. So it's, it's, we have Kids Church, which caters for zero to six years of age. That's grade one to grade three. And from then on, it's your Gap, which is grade four to grade six, and grade 
7 to 12, which is age, and beyond then uh, would be our youth. It's up, it's running, it's vibrant, and I think it's necessary for, a, for setting a strong foundation of worship in children, which then affects the, their productivity in society and how they share later in life and even now they are, they are gifts. So if you may just speak to the guys after the service and find out more about that. Secondly, to say, as Mel had already indicated, we come now to the end of our sermon series for the month of August, uh, Incredible Women of the Bible. It's been an amazing one. And today we are pleased to welcome the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa coming to share a message with us as we close the series. And so thank you very much, Mama, for gracing us with your presence. Before I invite Tristan, I must also indicate that um, within our church, every six or so years, we get given um, some kind of sabbatical leave. We call it fellow. And so I was due for that leave last year. I only took one month, and this year I have to take the second month. Otherwise, I will forfeit it. So for the month of September, I will be on sabbatical leave. But church continues, right? Thank you. Over to you, Tristan. Thank you, Similo. Morning, Grace Point. So what Similo didn't tell you there is why he's taking follow. <laughs> so we have some brave men in our church. They're taking a step of faith and getting married this month. So Similo is one of them. And Greg, our worship leader, is also getting married this month. Um, we also have our uh, one of our lay preachers, Sipo and his wife, Tabile, are renewing their vows. And the guy who's responsible for making all of this work, Adrian, at the back, he's getting married next month. Can we give all of them a round of applause? We wish you all the best for your wedding arrangements, and may God bless you. Um, so this morning, I'm advertising Alpha, as you guys can see. Uh, who here hasn't been for Alpha yet? Hands up. Hasn't been to Alpha. Okay, we're going to see you at the registration counter at the back. So uh, Alpha is a safe space. Um, it's a course designed for actually to introduce non-Christians to the Christian faith. And um, so please feel free to invite anyone um, who you believe that should be part of God's good news and God's kingdom um, to come and fellowship with us. It starts off with a meal, then we go into a video, and then we have small group discussions um, where it's a non-threatening environment where people can feel free to ask life's most important, meaningful questions. And um, it's, it's actually such a great ministry. Um, for me personally, I've been involved in the Alpha ministry now. I think this is my 15th Alpha that I'm doing. Um, it's a ministry that's near and dear to my heart. And I used to be a normal Sunday churchgoer like you guys. But the one thing that was missing is that intimate relationship with Jesus. And it was thanks to Alpha that I discovered that. And so sometimes it's not just good enough going to church on a Sunday if you're missing out the relationship element. And that's what Alpha has blessed me with. So please feel free to invite anyone that you know of to be part of it or come sign up yourself. We are raising funds for Alpha. We will be selling bacon and egg rolls this morning for a price of 25 rand at the back. So please come and support us. And even if you don't want one, you can still donate some cash to this ministry. It's self-funded. We funded ourselves. So please feel free to join us with that. Uh, my scripture this morning is from Proverbs 21, verse 25 and 26. And it says, The craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. Can you join me as I pray for the offering and tithes this morning? Lord God, I'd like to thank you that we could be found in your presence this morning, Lord. Lord God, that your, work, your word says, seek and we shall find. Knock and the door will be open. And Father God, as we enter your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father God, we enter your kingdom with praise in our hearts. 
for you alone are worthy to be praised. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place to come and abide with your people. Father God, I pray for every hand that's about to give to the extension of your kingdom, Lord. I pray, God, that you love a cheerful giver and that you'll just bless the hands that give, Lord. Father God, I pray that you convict our hearts, Lord, to do the good work that you've set before us. Lord God, I pray for your servant who's about to bring forth your word. I pray that you will just use her as a vessel, Lord, and that you will just have us be attentive to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's find out what's happening in the life of Grace Point. Thank you for giving so generously to the Wall of Remembrance project. There's already quite a substantial amount given, but we're needing a final push to raise the rest so that the project can get underway. Please look at the chart and see the figures of what still needs to be raised. And if you would prayerfully consider giving an amount that you believe in your heart is appropriate, then please follow that prompting and make your contribution. Use the reference wall with your payment. We do believe this will bless the community and be a source of comfort and outreach to the community. Thank you for your faithfulness to the gospel. What an informative and thought-provoking session we had with Reti van Niekerk last Wednesday. She'll be teaching again this week at our online Zoom Bible study on Misunderstood Woman of the Bible. Please join us on Wednesday, the 24th of August at 6.30 p.m. The Zoom link will be sent out during the course of the day. We look forward to seeing you there. For just 50 Rand, you can donate a Dignity Care Pack that will make an impact in the lives of young girls. 30% of girls do not attend school when they have their menstrual cycle because they do not have menstrual products. Let's show love and concern and create a culture that brings out the best in these young girls who live in underprivileged communities. You can make a direct deposit using the word dignity as a reference and the number of packs that you are wishing to donate or contact info at gracepoint.co.za for more information. The first Sunday of every month is a communion Sunday so we'll be celebrating that on the 4th of September as well as having a family service which will include our young people and children as part of the service. We look forward to seeing you there. Alpha Under a Tree is a ministry to spread the gospel amongst the poor and marginalized. Andre and Kim van Staden have over 15 years of experience in running this ministry. The next Alpha Under a Tree is happening at the Clay Oven Community. This is on the corner of Main Road and Witcombe Road, 
on Sunday 18 September at the very church which was started by Grace Point some time ago. You can get involved by going, giving or praying. To get involved and be a part of this exciting ministry, contact Kim at exord.co.za. How we handle our finances is important and it reflects where our hearts and priorities are. Our series for September is called Giving Up, where we'll look at principles of giving and how we can honor the Lord with the privilege of being able to give. God wants our giving to be a happy experience, so let's find out how that is possible. It is indeed a privilege for me to be worshiping together with you this morning as you conclude the series on the incredible women of the Bible. I thought about this theme uh, for some time and I came to this conclusion that um, the reason we have incredible women in the Bible and of the Bible is because we have incredible human beings that God has created in God's image male or female. But we become incredible, male or female, because we are created by an incredible God. And so this incredibility we're talking about comes from the one that has made us, our incredible God, our phenomenal God, our wonderful God, a God who, for whom there is nothing that is impossible. Allow me then to read this morning from the, the book of Acts as I introduce to you this phenomenal woman of the Bible. I'm reading from Acts chapter 16 from verse 11. And it reads as follows. We set sail from Traos and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district, district of Macedonia and the Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days, 
On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The, the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Now we're introduced here in this passage of scripture to an incredible woman named Lydia. Let me say that the story of Lydia <clears throat> comes in as the author of Acts, who is Luke, is telling a story of the third missionary journey of Paul. And Paul was going around preaching the gospel, setting up the Church of Christ. Now, at this point where we come across Lydia, Paul, Timothy, and Silas are on their way to Macedonia, where the Holy Spirit has directed them to go and plant the gospel. They choose then on their way to Macedonia to stop at uh, Philippi. Now, it's on a Sabbath day, and they, as they usually did, they are looking for a synagogue, a place to worship, but they do not find it. Instead, they find a group of women who were praying together. And amongst those women was a woman named Lydia. Note how Luke introduces Lydia to us in the passage that we have read. Lydia was a worshiper of God. Now this term, worshiper of God, at the time referred to the Gentile people who believed in the God of Israel, who were God-fearing and believed in the God of the Jewish faith. Sometimes they were called sympathizers to the Jewish faith. But other than being a worshiper of God, Lydia was a businesswoman we are told that she was, she lived in Philippi, but she came from Teatira, which is in the present day west side of Turkey. She traded in purple clothes, purple textile, purple dye. At the time, Purple textiles were worn by a certain class of people. It was for the, the noble class, the well-educated and the wealthy. It was a color that was worn by the royals, the royalties. And so it was a color and textiles that were for those who have status and money. So clearly, Lydia was doing business with the rich, and therefore, she is understood to have been rich herself. The third thing to note about this incredible woman is that she was a single woman. 
In the passage that we have read, we are told that she was owning a household or she had authority in her household. Commentators suggest that it could be that either Lydia belonged to a noble class herself and that she either had been married to a man of status and was now widowed. She belonged to a class and therefore she had authority and was able to make decisions herself as a woman, something that women of her time were not able to do. So we are told then in the story that at Paul's preaching, Lydia converted and accepted Jesus Christ as a Lord, and then she asked to be baptized, not only her, but she asked that her household be baptized. And so she, she became then the first European convert to Christianity. Now, if you, you go into the histories of the churches like the Catholic Church and the, the Greek Orthodox Church, you will find that in these churches, Lydia is, was canonized, and there are days that are set aside for Saint Lydia. The 3rd of August, for instance, in the Catholic Church is set aside to celebrate and to honor a Lydia. And in the Greek Orthodox Church, Lydia is referred to as equal to the apostles because of what she did. So, the question then might be, what then was incredible about this woman? Now, in the story that we have read, we are told that after Lydia was baptized, she made a request. Actually, she insisted that the, the missionaries, that is Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they come and stay at her home. Now, think back at that time, because it might not mean much to us today. There are so many people who have invited people in their homes. But think about the, the structure of the society at the time. There were clear boundaries and barriers between Jews and Gentiles. And Lydia was a Gentile, and Paul, Silas, and Timothy were Jews. There were clear barriers and division between males and females as maybe sometimes it's still like that. But note again, there were clear religious barriers between the Jews and the Gentiles. Especially, actually, um, a Jewish man was not supposed to be seen in public talking to women vice, and vice versa. And so when then this Gentile convert was inviting Jewish men into her home. She was actually breaking the barriers and the customs of the time. And it was so easy for her to be misinterpreted. Now, when you read the passage of scripture I've read, 
you actually see that there was hesitation for Paul and, and his uh, 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 people that were accompanying him. Because as it is written, it, we are told that Lydia had to urge them and had to persuade them, saying to them, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my home. Now, we see here a woman of faith who knew exactly what she had converted into. She actually understood the message of the gospel, what the gospel demands of those who have accepted the gospel. Here we see a convert, a female convert, teaching the missionaries who had converted her what the gospel is about. She is saying to these men, if you consider me a follower of Christ just like you are, come and stay in my home. In other words, accept my ministry because I also have a ministry to, 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 to perform. And my ministry here is to offer you hospitality. My ministry is to offer God's people hospitality. And so if you then believe that you are at the same level as, as believers in the Lord, come and stay in my home. We see a gentle convert persuading the apostles to practice what they preached. And that is why then in the Greek Orthodox Church, Lydia is considered to be equal to the apostles because she did not just have and understand the gospel and the message of God in, his, in her mind as a theory, but she, she practiced it. Now, throughout ages and generations, God has used women to fulfill many of God's purposes. These women that we are calling incredible women have had to overcome fear, have had to take risks, have had to go against the custom and practices of the time to be true to God. In the call of Lydia to, to Paul and, the, and, the, the, and Silas and Timothy to accept her hospitality, Lydia was not about pleasing these men, but she was about pleasing God. Remember that at the time, hospitality, was a requirement and, and, and a, a way of life for those who feared God. If you, you remember well, in the passage of scripture from Leviticus, God is very clear in the laws there to say that you shall treat the strangers who sojourn amongst you as natives amongst you and you shall love them as you love yourself. In the times we're talking about, hospitality was actually taken as welcoming God in your own home, in your own space. It was taken as offering hospitality even to the angels without knowing it. And so to, to be welcoming and to offer hospitality to people that are in need and people who are strangers was considered a sacred duty. And so when Lydia then was saying to Paul, Silas, and Timothy, come and stay in my home, she 
was practicing a duty that she believed was a sacred duty. And she was actually practicing the faith that she believed in. Now, what then can we as followers of Christ today learn from this incredible woman? At a time when we talk about hospitality, when we talk about accepting and welcoming strangers, sometimes we know the dangers of strangers. We teach our children, don't talk to strangers. At a time really when opening your home is a dangerous thing to do. When we talk about hospitality today, we're not really talking about putting ourselves in danger, but we are talking about using the, 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 the times and the opportunities that God gives to us to, to stretch our hands and help others. We are talking about being alert of the opportunities that God gives us to be a welcoming pe person to the next person. We are talking about opportunities of being God to the next person. We are talking about opportunities of breaking barriers that society makes and saying, even though you don't look like me, but you are a human being and therefore I welcome you as a human being. We are talking about taking opportunities to, 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 to make people who are estranged, people that society puts aside and say you don't belong. We are talking about accepting and welcoming those people and say you belong. This is a call then, people of God, for all of us as we learn from Lydia to say, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel that breaks barriers. It is a gospel that says we all become children of God and friends with one another and be there for one another. We all become available to assist and help. We are told then in the history that not only did Lydia welcome the missionaries, but Lydia's home became the first church in Philippi. Remember at that time, Christian churches were, were, were used to gather in the synagogues, where there were synagogues. In this city, there was no synagogue, but Lydia's home became the first house of prayer that was there in the place of Philippi. Let us look at the opportunities, the gifts, the talents, the resources that God has given and ask ourselves, for what purpose has God put me in this place? For what reason has God put me in this place? For what reason has God give me, given me this opportunity? And what is God's purpose in my life, in the place where I am? This was a woman who was put by God in Philippi with the resources that she had, and she used those for the foundation and the, 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 the foundation of the Christian church from, for that city. What is it that God has put you where you are for this city, for this church, for people that you come across? Why are you where you are as a disciple of Christ? What does your faith push you to do, urge you to do in order to please God and to ensure that the purpose of God happens through you. 
we, wherever we are, are supposed to be fulfilling God's purposes. And therefore, we need to then begin to, to, to be in touch with those purposes and allow God to use us to touch others. We say in the Methodist Church, as we talk about our theme this year, we are reimagining social holiness and, and, and assuring that wherever we are, we touch people with God's holiness. We touch people with hope. We touch people with healing in the place where you are, with what you, you have. What is God's purpose for the city, for the church, for the streets in which you live, for the complex in which you live? What is, is, is it that God is calling you to do there? Something, you are not there by mistake. You are there for a certain purpose. And Lydia is then teaching us that the opportunities that God gives us are the opportunities for us to please God and to exercise our ministries. May God help us then to be able to offer what we have, who we are, the places we find ourselves, to please God and to be God's hands, feet, and to be there for God's people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Precious and wonderful God, You are God, and you have called us as your people to be God to others. Thank you for the ministry you have offered to the world through many women, women of faith, women of courage, women who have not shied away to do what you call them to do. And so we pray, dear Lord, that you use us, men and women of this time, to touch others and to fulfill your purposes in the world in which you have put us, in the cities where we are, in the communities where we live. We thank you, dear Lord, that you choose to use us as human beings to do your will and to fulfill your purposes. Help each and every one of us gathered here to find out what your purposes are about our lives, about where you have put us, about what you have given us. Lead and guide us as we seek to touch others with your love, your holiness, your grace, and your hospitality. We pray, dear Lord, for many who need you most at this time. Some are unable to pray for themselves. We know, dear Lord, that you see all of us in the world. Respond to many prayers, to many cries of your people to many needs that are around your people and use us as your church to meet some of those needs. Help us as your church to be a place of hospitality, a place of love, and a place where those who feel that they are strangers may find a home. May our churches be centers of hope and healing we pray for this blessing in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not 
To hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within. So we go knowing that hospitality, welcoming, and embracing the other is a sacred duty. I hope I'm not the only one who came hungry. Bacon and egg rolls will be served as we raise some funds for Alpha. Let's enjoy them in the foyer after the service. Receive now the blessing of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed week.